Good evening. Welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. Tonight I'm putting together this week's Vice Squad six pack pattern. And since it's November and fall blooming olive season, this is a good time to learn a good betis pattern. This is called a bear betis. The original was designed by a fellow down on the San Juan in New Mexico, a bear good. My only variation here is I tie it on a scud hook. I like a little more tuck in the body form. Now, I'm going to start off with a fine thread. This happens to be Danville's Flymaster. You can use a Uni A dot or UTC 70 denier. And for a tail, I'm going to get some pheasant fibers. What I've done is collected them off the side until the tips are even. Then I'll grab it tightly and peel it off. So that's the easiest way to keep them neat. Now I'm going to get my tail ready. Then I'm going to wrap. I really want to color with one layer of thread until I just get started down the bend. And this is the good trick. It's to get that just secured with a couple of wraps but keep the brown on the top keep all these fibers from getting down on the bottom. Now if your tail's too long at this point you can grab your fibers and tug them gently. And you want them fairly short, shorter than you would think. Your ultimate proportions are going to be the tail takes up a third, the abdomen takes up a third, and the thorax a third. Now, one, two, three, Four touching turns forward, and then I'm going to pull the pheasant tail fibers down and make a fifth. Two, three, four. Fifth one goes on top. One, two, three, four. And once you get to the forward third, you don't need any more segments, so you can just kind of bind it down. Now, the feature of this fly is it's going to be light colored on the bottom and dark colored on the top. That's very common with your betas. We've got some segmentation, but that's not the feature that's being emphasized on this fly pattern. It's the color. So as it tumbles in the water, the fish will see light, dark, light, dark, and hopefully have enough confidence to eat it without any more thinking. Okay, now the little optional deal here is a little small mirage. This stuff, you can also use a strand from Flashaboo. And for the most part, I do quite well without <clears throat> without flash on this pattern. But you might as well have a few in there. You might make it stand out in a heavy hatch. So get that centered on the top. And then we're going to use Olive Antron. And when it comes off the card, it's about twice as thick as you want. So you're going to go in there and uh, separate that out into halves and then each half is going to be kind of unruly so just twist it there now I can set this one aside and it won't get messed up between now and when I'm ready to use it and the bundle that I'm going to use Kind of stroke those fibers together. And then trim it square so that when you tie it in, just so those tips are shorter than the eye of the hook, everything else will be taken care of by wraps. Now I could shape that thorax with thread, and that's what I would do on sizes 18s, 20s, and 22s. This is a 16. It's more appropriate in the spring and when you get bigger betas. Uh, you'll definitely want to tie this in the smaller patterns and 
just use a thread abdomen, but with the 16, I use just a little bit of dubbing. Keeping it thin. Thin helps this thing sink without being heavy. That lets you use this as a dropper behind lots of different stuff without a tungsten bead or something like that. You can fish a small dry in front of it. And this won't swamp it. Now I'm going to be tying several of these, so I'm going to take a little kind of a preparation step here. Flatten all these fibers out so that when I pull it over, it'll be easier to divide it into halves. And when I've got it divided into halves, I'll just twist each side. to kind of keep them distinct. Fold the far one back, one turn, near one back, one turn, and do the best you can to keep this strip of flash right on top and centered. Now I've only used five turns to set both legs and the flash and I'll only need a couple of turns on a whip finish. That'll help me keep the head nice and small and not have it be a fourth segment. Now I'm going to trim these legs so that they're a little bit longer than the abdomen. And take a look at the my leftover stuff is already separated, so when I tie it in the next time, it'll pull over flat, but it'll already have divided itself into even halves, and it'll make the second one, third one, fourth one go even faster. Okay, there we go. I like the proportions. It's light colored on the bottom and dark on the back. So there's your bare betas with the flash.